Hello YouTube. <clears throat> I've been very much interested in the legends <coughs> about the flying man of the Russian Far East for years and I've collected information. I've received a number of reports about 26, 25 years ago from <coughs> my colleagues in Vladivostok, uh, from the ufologists headed by Alexander Rempel at the time who went to the taiga in Siberia in search of many interesting archaeological sites, <clears throat> artifacts and of course paranormal phenomena. Most of the people who sent me information were ufologists and researchers of anomalous phenomena. They sent me letters, there was no email at the time to speak about, letters from all over Russia and the new commonwealth and um, from Russian cities such as Yaroslav, even Dalnigorsk, which was still a closed off city to the foreigners. The letter informing me of the flying man's return came from Vladivostok, from Alexander Rempel, who was the leading ufologist of the Russian Far East. And he was quite known in the Soviet Union and mother in Russia years ago. And his group of researchers had undertaken numerous and often dangerous expeditions. Uh, but the story that had to do with the flying man does not in itself correlate to ufology. And it reminded me of something that I was told by a person who had served in the Far East many years prior to that. It was the legend of the flying man. The person, as a young man, had served in the Soviet army. He had been to the Far East too. He told me many stories of the taiga dwellers, cannibalism, the snow-covered concentration camps he had seen, the beauty of the Far Eastern nature, brave taiga hunters, about human kindness and human cruelty. In his travels through the taiga, as part of his military duty, he and his comrades once came upon a mortally wounded Chinese man. That person was lying in the blood-drenched snow with several dead wolves around him. The man told the soldiers that he was a hunter, that he was attacked by gold smugglers who knifed him, took away his rifle and left him to die in the wilderness. The wolves came quickly, but the hunter had a small handgun with him and killed three of the wolves. The fact that the man claiming to be a taiga hunter was so easily overtaken by gold smugglers that he had an unusual handgun on him and that there were ashes in the snow around him had convinced the commanding officer of the unit that found him that the man was probably a Chinese spy. They gave the wounded man some moonshine, they acquired it from a local source somewhere. After he drank the alcohol, the man told them in a perfect Muscovite accent at Russian language that they should be aware of the flying creature, sounding like a human female, a женщина, samka, he mentioned, in extreme pain. The creature had been following the Chinese hunter for days, never coming close, only once revealing itself. Seeing that some of the soldiers were visibly scared, their CO ordered them to march on. They obeyed. Several minutes later their commanding officer joined them. In his hand was that curious handgun. The wounded man was left to die in the taiga, to be eaten by wolves against whom he had no more defense. When the unit returned to their regiment a week later, the commanding officer made a complete report to the KGB officers assigned to their regiment and turned over the gun to them. Uh, the person I knew and his comrades heard strange noises during the several nights after leaving the Chinese men behind, but the commanding officer immediately opened fire, shooting his Kalashnikov in the direction of the noise, and the taiga quieted down. But that was in the 1950s. What was taking place in the taiga in the 1990s and today? Because the reports are still coming. The taiga is still a challenging 
place full of unseen dangers, wild animals, and sometimes vicious human, you know, part, it's part of the Russian Far East. So what is that creature known to the locals as the flying man? A drone outgrown violated the nocturnal quiet of the taiga. The hunter leaped up, determined for himself what direction the groan came from, but could not understand who might make such sounds. The sounds commenced as monotonous howling, then turned into woman-like screams that ended as mournful howls. Because of the screams of the unseen and unknown creature, the hunter's hair stood on end. Somebody was screaming from the height of the mountain pass, which was located some 500 meters away. And then the source of those sounds was approaching the hunter at the speed of a walking man. The hunter's dogs, born in the taiga and never afraid of any animal, hid behind the hunter and began trembling all over. Now the hunter wrapped his rifle and prepared himself for the imminent encounter. When the creature was, according to the hunter's sense of distance, about 70 meters away, the screaming stopped. At daybreak, the hunter searched through the surrounding area for hours using his dogs, but found no traces. That is how Yermakov, a person who had encountered the creature known to many in the maritime province, um, or Primorsky cry um, as Litaishi Chilavek was described. Litaishi Chilavek in English means the flying man. Actually the word Chilavek in Russian means human being. Man in Russian male is Mushina. <clears throat> but let us call the creature the flying man for the sake of simplicity. Knowing that it may not be the only gender flying around. The next episode I'll tell you was related by Yan Van Shen, because there are many Chinese people living in the Russian Far East, and they have their own stories. Once Van Shen was chased for a few minutes by a woman's or female howling. The taiga dweller did not see the creature, but ran away in panic, not stopping for more than a kilometer to look back. He never again returned to the place of the howling. Was it maybe some bird making awful noises that had scared him? Van Shen was offended when asked this question. Having spent all his life in the taiga, he knew every bird sound that there is and every bird. No, it was the devil, according to the Chinese man. Some call the creature the flying man. Some mostly the native taiga dweller, consider it to be a sort of a devil. Uh, this creature is often heard but rarely seen. It resides in the area of the Pidan Mountains. The creature was frequently heard in the 1930s and 1940s, and then it came back in the 19, late 1980s and 1990s. Since 1989, it has not only been heard from, there were actually encounters with it. On occasions, the flying man approached people on its own volition. Here are some witness stories from those who had encountered this creature. In 1944, six soldiers had worked on a farm in the vicinity of Yekaterinovka, under the command of a starshina, master sergeant. Once in the evening hour, two soldiers were returning from a nearby village on a cart loaded with foodstuffs. Three kilometers away from the farm, they saw a descending radiant sphere. As it was landing, they heard hurrying woman's howls coming in their direction. The soldiers abandoned their cart and ran like crazy to the farm, panic-stricken and in fear. Since then they had become deathly afraid of the dark and told people who wanted to listen about the flying man. Maybe those who see my videos had a chance to see a Soviet Japanese motion picture which was also playing in the United States and Europe. The title of it was Dersu Urzala. The film was based on books 
written by a famous Russian explorer, uh, Arsenyev. He was well known in the Far East, and to this day he is respected by many different ethnic people who inhabit the area. Arsenyev took the following travel notes, and Rempel, my correspondent and colleague in the Far East, had those notes 25 years ago. And here's what Arsenyev said. My dog trudged along behind me. I saw an ursine footprint on trail, quite like a human footprint. Alma bristled up and growled, and right after that somebody swiftly darted to the side, breaking the bushes. Alma clung closely to my legs. Meanwhile, something occurred that I did not at all expect to take place. I heard the flapping of wings. The dog was scared and all the time clung to my legs. At the same time, screams resembling women's howls were heard. In the evening, the Udiyans began, began a lively conversation and, had, and said that in this locality dwelled a human being that could fly through the air. Then there is another interesting uh, episode. The following episode is the story of um, somebody named Kurinsov about not so distant events that took place in the same locality. That person woke up at night with this distinct feeling that someone was watching him. The hunter was sleeping in the fashion of the taiga dwellers, lying by the nodya, a bonfire, as it is called in the Russian Far East. He was awakened by an instinctive feeling of fear, even panic. Kurinsov went down on all fours, adjusted the fire and looked at his watch. Suddenly his lateral vision registered something huge and dark that was swiftly falling on the bonfire. Falling on his back to escape any impact, the hunter saw a creature that had humanoid shape. He could see webbed bat-like wings. The hunter got up quickly, hid himself behind the trunk of the nearest tree and did not leave it until daybreak. In the morning he searched the immediate area but found no traces. In the early 1990s the flying man glided over two tourist stands. The tourists were camped at the foot of the Pidan. Having flown over the brook the creature landed in the thicket and from there it observed the people. The tourists dared not come any closer, did not sleep the whole night watching for the stranger, but it disappeared, leaving behind absolutely no traces. Maybe my colleagues from Vladivostok let themselves get carried away in search for the myth mythological creature that exists only in the local legends? Well, here's an interesting confirmation. It comes from Petropavlovsk. Early in early 1990s, during the very first night at their new house, the Ivanitsky family was awakened by an unusually loud cheering that reminded them of crickets. This happened more than once. On the tenth day, the head of the family had discovered a strange creature under the bed, either a dog or a huge mouse. After slippers were thrown at the creature, it twitched and grew in size, becoming almost three times as big. Unexpectedly, it cast out from its nose a very long trunk, which it used to try to grab legs of the landlords. The family, already scared out of their wits, began hitting the creature with whatever they could lay their hands on, and the children were spraying it with household chemicals. The creature rolled over to the far corner and lay there still. When it was brought out from under the bed, they discovered a creature that looked like a dog. It had very short bluish hair, two three-fingered paws, and strong wings, about a meter and a half in wing spread. The shape of the creature's wings reminded the family of a bat's wings. The creature's muzzle looked like a human face cast in plaster, an almost flat, clear face with small forehead very large eyes and a tiny lipless mouth. Instead of a nose, the creature had one triangular hole. Uh, the head of the house, Ivanitsky, fearful of the consequences, 
who knows, maybe he killed a state protected animal. He threw the creature into a ditch left by construction workers. Soon the creature disappeared from that ditch. My Vladivostok colleagues had on occasions heard strange howlings in the taiga and even could imitate it. Uh, they were not about to go hunting for the flying men. In their opinion, it would be an impossible undertaking. If the creature is not a relic of some forgotten age, then it could be a representative of some alien world, perhaps finding its way to the Russian Far East in a radiant sphere, a ball of light. The goal of the Vladivostok researchers was to take pictures of the creature, record its voice, and find its entrance into our world. If the creature is a relic of our planet's history, then there should be even there should be even more care taken toward this flying man. And just to be sure, there are other confirmations of the flying man, and I'll tell you more about them later. Just as I'll tell you more about the legends and very strange phenomena of the Far East, a beautiful but hard to access in many places land. And we'll speak about Dalnegorsk and about the strange mountains of the Far East and much more. Thank you.